Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess, we confess that, that we are, are held, held captive, captive by, by sin. sin. In, In spite, spite of, of our best efforts, we have gone astray. astray. We, we have, have not welcomed the stranger. the stranger. We, we have, have not, not loved, loved our, neighbor. our neighbor. We have, we not, have not been Christ, been Christ to, one to one another. another. Restore, Restore us, us, O God. God. Wake, Wake us up and turn us from our, our sin. sin. Renew, Renew us each day in the light, in the light of, Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we light the third candle on our Advent wreath. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant the, this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So this is the time when we have a special message for our children. So children, if you're listening, I have a question for you. Do you know how your mom and dad chose your name when you were born? If not, maybe this is a good time to ask them. Maybe you were named after a relative or maybe after a special person in your life. I asked our council president, Carolyn Nashheim, how her name was chosen, and she shared that her mom was a teacher and she had a student who was very special to her and her name was Carolyn, and so she chose that name for her daughter. In our gospel story today, we learn about the birth of John the Baptist. His father's name was Zechariah, and his mother's name was Elizabeth. Both were very faithful to God and were very old. They prayed for many years that God would give them a child. And God remained faithful and sent an angel to them to tell them that they would have a son and that his name would be John. When it came time to name their baby, everyone thought he'd be named after his father. But Elizabeth and Zechariah were faithful and named the baby John, just as instructed by the angel Gabriel. They knew that this child was sent by God to do great things. This story reminds us that God fulfills his promises in his timing. So children, ask your parents how they chose your name and together with your parents, look up the meaning of your name and know that God is always faithful and has a special purpose for your life. A reading from Isaiah. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came all over the neighbors, neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So today we mark the third Sunday in Advent. We light the third candle on our Advent wreath and we continue in our series, Journey to Bethlehem. And as we read the story from the Gospel of Luke, we turn our attention to Elizabeth and the birth and naming of John the Baptist. What's in a name? Do you know why you were given your name? Do you know its meaning? I don't actually know why my parents chose my name, but I do know that they had it picked out six years before I was born. I often heard the story that my dad had my name written down on a piece of paper in his pocket. But as each of my brothers came along, my name had to wait till they had a girl. The name Elizabeth holds special meaning for me as it's the name of my two-year-old great-great-niece in Baltimore. I asked my great-niece, her mother, why they chose the name Elizabeth Joy for their daughter. She said they wanted biblical names for their children, and the meaning of the name is God is my oath, or consecrated to God. And they also had the verse, the joy of the Lord is my strength in mind, and wanted her to always be characterized by biblical joy in all circumstances. And in our text today, Elizabeth's story is one of faith, even though she couldn't see the bigger plan. She was of the priestly line of Aaron, and her husband, Zacharias, was the priest assigned to the temple in Jerusalem. They were godly people, careful to obey all of God's laws in spirit as well as in letter. Both were well advanced in years, and Elizabeth was barren. They had been praying for a child, and when Zacharias was serving in the temple before the altar of incense, the angel Gabriel appeared before him and gave him the good news that Elizabeth would bear a son and that he was to name him John. Zacharias replied that it would be impossible as he and Elizabeth were so old. But because he didn't believe, the angel struck him silent until the child would be born. Soon afterward, Elizabeth became pregnant. The following month, God sent Gabriel to see Mary a relative of Elizabeth's. And Gabriel told Mary that she would bear a son and his name would be Jesus. A few days later, Mary went to visit Elizabeth and at the sound of her voice, Elizabeth's child leaped within her and she immediately saw Mary as the mother of her Lord. So what can we take away from this story during this Christmas season? Well, for one, neither one of these pregnancies should have happened. Elizabeth was well advanced in years and barren. Mary was a young virgin engaged to Joseph. But God thought it was important enough to announce both of these births by an angel named Gabriel. Zacharias and Elizabeth were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And God found them worthy to include in his plans. Mary was called highly favored by God He found her worthy to include in his plans for the birth of the Savior of the world. Both of the women praised God that he would find them worthy. God is in the miracle business, then and now. Zacharias and Elizabeth had been praying for a child for so many years, 
and had become barren. Mary was a young girl that would become pregnant with the king of kings while being engaged to Joseph. During this holiday season, may we all rest in the assurance that God has a plan that began before creation. That plan would include a young virgin to carry and deliver the savior of the world. And because of that, we walk by faith, not in fear. Isn't it good to know that it's never too late with God? We have a God of second chances and third and fourth and whatever it takes. God keeps his promises. With God, failure is never final. Where's your place in God's story? We often think we need to prove ourselves or work really hard to be successful or rich. But friends, it's not about us or how we think we can achieve what we can do. We need to shift our focus and ask, how does God want to use us to fulfill his purposes? We're never too old to be used in God's plan and in his timing. God will make a way. Pastor Joe has shared that he drove a truck for 22 years before God called him into full-time ministry. And for me, it was after 30 years in corporate management that I answered the call to full-time ministry. And you can minister right now where you are, in the workplace or in social settings. God can use you wherever he places you. God has a plan for us. Are we open to follow his lead even when we don't know the way? God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. There's a song by Matthew West, it's called uh, Broken Things. I encourage you to listen to it sometime. Here are just some of the lyrics. The pages of history, they tell me, it's true, that it's never the perfect, it's always the ones with the scars that you use. It's the rebels and the prodigals, it's the humble and the weak, all the misfit heroes you chose. Tell me there's hope for sinners like me. Now I'm just a beggar in the presence of a king. I wish I could bring so much more, but if it's true you use broken things, then here I am, Lord, I'm all yours. Grace is a kingdom with gates wide open. There's a seat at the table just waiting for you, so come on inside. So what part do we play in God's story? God continually gives us another chance to begin again. And no matter how many times it will take, we find assurance in the knowledge that our Heavenly Father will not give up on us. That certainly is good news for us, for we are filled with more dirt and grime than we imagine was in the stable that Mary and Joseph are journeying toward. And for us, it's not just an outward dirt, but a dirt so dark inside our hearts that it's unimaginable. There's a pattern of creation and recreation, life and death and life, an acknowledgement that new beginnings are a part of our broken nature, a promise that God welcomes new beginnings and graciously picks us up after each fall, helping us to dust off and look ahead. As we read our gospel today, perhaps we realize that one promise after another is fulfilled. The promises, centuries, not weeks old, are coming to life. The ancient words of Isaiah are about to be clothed in flesh and blood. See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way. The good news finds its way where the roads are rough and hope seems lost. The good news of Jesus Christ finds its way to us. He comes to us where we are right now. Perhaps others wait to hear the story and to know the one who will never leave. And we know their weariness for we have been there too. And we are called to share the good news. Readiness is what the season of Advent is all about. We are getting ready for the coming of the King. We are getting ready, getting ready to remember and celebrate once again the first coming of Christ in a lowly stable. We are preparing to honor the birth of our Savior, the birth of hope for all people in this broken world. But Advent is not only a time of looking back to the events of the past, it's also a time when we look to the future, to the king's return. Jesus beckons us to keep watch. What about us? Are we ready? He is coming. 
It could be today or it could be tomorrow. It could be a few months away or in 300 years. No one knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father. What counts is that we live our lives on the assumption that he could be coming at any time. In other words, we need to live the life that Christ has called us to today. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind today. And we are to love our neighbors as ourselves today. We are to provide for the hungry and thirsty today. We are to offer radical hospitality to the stranger today. And we are to clothe the needy and visit the sick today. And so we wait. Waiting for the one who comes like a thief in the night. And so what shall we do when we're waiting? We get ready. We get ready by living our lives to the fullest in the light and love of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, we dare not get so distracted by the routine and ordinary things of life that we miss the opportunity and joy of life itself. We need to pay attention. We need to pray without ceasing. We need to keep our mind and our hearts focused on God. He wants us to be fully alive in him today. He wants us to be awake and aware. He came that we might have life and have it abundantly. And he is coming again. Are we ready? The late Henry Nouwen wrote the following. I have found it very important to try to let go of my wishes and instead live in hope. When I choose to let go of my sometimes petty and superficial wishes and trust that my life is precious and meaningful in the eyes of God, something really new, something beyond my own expectations begins to happen for me. To wait with openness and trust is an enormously radical attitude toward life. It is choosing to hope that something is happening for us that is far beyond our own imaginings. It is giving up control over our future and letting God define our life. It is living with the conviction that God molds us in love, holds us in tenderness, and moves us away from the sources of our fear. One of our homebound seniors recently shared that her day begins with God, and she talks to him throughout the day, and he walks by her side all day long. God came to Mary and Elizabeth in a time of harsh reality, and they continued to believe and hope in a God who can do extraordinary things. They did this in a world very much like ours, and that is why God came to them, not because they were protected from harsh reality, but, be, but because they continued to be open to God's call. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. God noticed everything in the lives of Mary and Elizabeth, just like he notices everything in our lives. Sometimes following God's plan isn't the most popular thing to do, Mary and Elizabeth accepted God's blessings even though they came at a cost. We have to make room in our hearts for God. When we allow Christ into our lives, he will reshape us by replacing our old lives with new creation. God makes the impossible possible. He caused a virgin an elder, and an elderly woman to conceive and bear children. He can make the impossible possible for us today if we have faith. God came to earth in the form of Jesus to restore our living relationship with him now and for all eternity. He came to give dignity to those who are not valued by society. He came to give hope to the hopeless, peace to those whose hearts are in turmoil, and love to those who are broken. Jesus came to give us the greatest gift of all. He will call on people to show compassion to the poor and help them, just like many of you are responding to the various outreach efforts we sponsor. May the light of Christ shine in our lives now and always. Let us pray. Father, we continue on our Advent journey with the awareness that no gift at any time in any place can compare with your gift to us. Use the gifts we bring to open our hearts more fully to that which is ours in Christ. Amen.
us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. We especially pray for community leaders and law enforcement officers in this time of unrest. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. We pray especially for Carla, Robin, Carrie, Dale, Jacob, Rob, Candy, Gloria, Jeff, Tammy, Peggy, Jan, Aaron, Jim, Mark, Thomas, Brandy, Stephen, Joseph, John, and Pastor Joe. For Melissa, Rick, and Zoe Zawada on the death of Melissa's uncle, Peter Ranum. For all victims of violence, all affected by natural disasters, storms, flooding, earthquakes, and wildfires. Bring relief to all afflicted with COVID-19. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others, and all who are working to end this pandemic, and for all others who we now name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Advent. We're glad that you can join us virtually. The building remains closed through December 18th and we will continue with virtual services. The preschool and church offices remain open. We will continue to monitor the number of COVID cases as we evaluate the safety of worshiping in person. Please continue to check the website for updates. And that decision will be based on COVID number of cases in our community and guidance from the city and state. Several outreach opportunities are available. The Mitten Tree for the Food Pantry, Night Ministry, Concordia Place, and others. See website for details. If you'd like to be part of a small group Bible study, please let Pastor Joe know. Small groups will be meeting over Zoom. If you'd like a visit or a phone call from Pastor, please let us know that as well. We keep Pastor Joe in our prayers as he recovers from a planned surgery this past week. We hold Melissa, Rick, and Zoe Zawada in prayer on the death of Melissa's uncle, Peter Ranum, And we hold the Randy Jones family in our prayers as well as he passed away this past week and his service will be on Monday. Blessings on your week.
Holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait. We praise you for joining us to your people of old. We bless you for the prophets who call us to righteousness and promise a new earth with peace for all. For the word of your covenant, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus, our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O God. We magnify you, O God. Send your spirit on all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace. Accompany us with your might and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. All praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in it heaven. Is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, forgive and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. From evil. For, for thine is the kingdom and the, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting the long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.